What the? Look! Do you see this? Part of the sun has broken off, and it's now churning above the star's surface, having formed a giant vortex. What's going on there? Well, let's admit it. We still know very little about the sun, however crucial this star is for our well-being. But in the case of the broken sun, scientists can probably explain what happened. Some of the star's plasma likely erupted from the sun's surface and broke away, creating something resembling a crown-like vortex over the solar north pole. And still, this is just a theory. Astronomers need to conduct further analysis to figure out if this is what really happened. At the moment, they're a bit baffled, since this phenomenon is nothing like anything they've seen before. But the footage we've got is undeniably impressive. What is more alarming, though, is that the behavior of our star is currently changing. The sun is ramping up its activity. It's getting rowdier with flares and sunspots. This year, it's flared every day so far. It's also thrown up a few X-class and M-class flares in January of 2023. These flares are the largest and second largest eruptions our star can produce. Even though it sounds kind of alarming, don't worry. The sun has certain activity cycles that repeat every 11 years or so. Some of them are relatively calm, while others are absolutely wild. These cycles happen simultaneously with the fluctuations in the sun's magnetic field. When it gets the weakest at the star's poles, they switch places. This makes the polarity of the magnetic field reverse. This is the very period of time when the sun is the most active. It's known as solar maximum. Right now, we are near this solar maximum. Scientists can figure it out by analyzing unusual solar activity. But since the sun is still pretty much a mystery to us, no one can determine when the polarity reversal is likely to occur. A rough estimation is July of 2025. At the same time, we can't say that the current solar situation is normal. It's true that each sun's cycle is different from others. Some are weaker and some are more powerful. So this one, which started in December of 2019, has already significantly exceeded all scientists' expectations and keeps doing so. Which brings us back to the vortex observed on February 2, 2023 that impressed astronomers so much. It started as a solar prominence. This is a bright plasma filament extending away from the surface of the sun. And, let me tell you, solar prominences are an absolutely regular phenomenon. And like the most recent one, they often occur at high altitudes around the sun's crown, which is the outermost layer of the star's atmosphere, also known as the corona. Anyway, prominences like the one in question are called hedgerow prominences because they look like a hedge. But what surprised astronomers happened a bit later. The material of the filament apparently broke away and started circling the pole near where it occurred at 60 degrees latitude and at a speed of about 60 miles per second. And it lasted for about eight hours. One scientist, who has been observing the sun's cycles for decades, claims that he has never seen vortices like that. Unfortunately, solar poles are very difficult to observe, so it might be a while till we get our answers. For the first time, a spacecraft touched the surface of the sun in 2021. It was NASA's Parker Solar Probe that flew through our star's upper atmosphere. It also took some samples of particles and examined magnetic fields there. It was a real milestone and a giant leap for solar science. Getting their hands on the very stuff the sun is made of will allow researchers to uncover crucial information about our star and its influence on us and the entire solar system. The Parker Solar Probe moved closer to the sun's surface and started making discoveries that other spacecraft were too far away to see. For example, the probe examined the solar wind from within. It's a flow of particles coming from the sun. These particles can influence us here on Earth. Even before coming super close to the star, the Parker probe found out that near the sun, 
There were loads of magnetic zigzag structures in the solar wind called switchbacks. But at that time, scientists couldn't figure out how they formed and where they appeared. But now, more than two years later, we know for sure that switchbacks originate at the solar surface. As you know, the Sun doesn't have any solid surface, unlike our planet, but it has a superheated atmosphere, which is made of solar material bound by magnetic forces and gravity. When pressure and rising heat push that material away from the star, it eventually reaches a point where the Sun's magnetic field and its gravity can't contain it anymore. This point has its own name, the Alphane Critical Surface. It marks the edge of the solar atmosphere, and that's also where the solar wind begins. The material that manages to make it past the boundary turns into the solar wind. It drags the sun's magnetic field toward Earth and beyond. But the most important thing is that past the boundary, this wind starts moving so fast that its waves can't return back to the sun, which literally means severing all connections with the star. During its flyby, the Parker probe passed inside and out of the sun's corona several times, which proved that the Alphane critical surface wasn't shaped like a smooth sphere. It has valleys and spikes, and its surface is kind of wrinkled. At one point, the probe even came across a pseudo-streamer. These are massive structures in the sun's corona that rise high above the surface of the star. You can see them from Earth during solar eclipses. And you know what? For the Parker probe, passing through the pseudo-streamer was like flying into the eye of a storm. Inside, everything was much quieter. Particles moved more slowly, and there were fewer switchbacks. It was a huge change from the barrage of particles the probe encountered inside the solar wind. Now, speaking of solar flares, those are pretty dangerous for Earth. The radiation they release can interfere with our radio communication. Such storms affect all electronic systems, from the internet to power grids, and can even destroy satellites. Most solar flares last for minutes, but some continue for hours. Scientists classify solar flares depending on how brightly they shine in X-rays. You aren't likely to notice the tiniest flares if you don't have special equipment. Medium solar flares lead to fleeting radio blackouts at the poles, but nothing too serious. It's X-class flares that people should be worried about. They cause the strongest and longest lasting solar storms. A super strong solar storm heading toward Earth won't happen at once. First, there will be high energy sunlight, mostly ultraviolet rays and X-rays. They will ionize our planet's upper atmosphere and mess up radio communication. After that, a radiation storm will hit Earth. And finally, a colossal cloud of charged solar particles will reach our atmosphere. The particles will interact with the planet's magnetic field and wreak havoc all over the world. If an intense solar storm happened these days, it would start by disrupting GPS and knocking out satellites. If any astronauts were spacewalking at that moment, they would have mere minutes after the first flash of light to find shelter. Their spacecraft would likely be properly shielded and safe enough. The main challenge would be to get inside in time. After that, the storm will proceed to interfere with satellite communications. That's why tons of your daily activities, from calling your friends to paying with your credit card, would be at risk. But one of the worst consequences would be connected with power grids. Power surges caused by the particles coming from the sun would damage giant transformers. A powerful solar storm could cost people one trillion to two trillion dollars. Luckily, if such a powerful solar storm was heading our way, we'd most likely get some kind of warning Modern equipment all over the world and in space doesn't stop watching the sun even for a second. It would give us some time to prepare, between several hours and a couple of days. And if transformers were taken offline in time, the consequences wouldn't be so dramatic. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.